Assalamu alaikum. My name is Courtney. I'm from the USA, from Connecticut, the state next to New York, if you're trying to locate on the map. Connecticut is known for having Yale University. That's what people recognize Connecticut, Yale University. But, well, sorry, I'm reading the questions while I do this video. So, how long have I been a Muslim? I've been a Muslim for, it'll be four weeks uh, tomorrow, because I converted January 22nd on a Friday. And how does it feel like to be a Muslim? It's amazing. <laughs> it's the most amazing thing ever, and there's no words to describe this feeling, you know, but like I was reborn into a, you know, a new, better life. <clears throat> Excuse me. My childhood, my childhood was pretty normal, you know. I've, you know, my parents, they're good people. They've been married for a long time. So, you know, I was always like a super hyperactive kid. I couldn't sit or stand in one place. I needed to be running around doing something. So, I, my parents brought me into sports, so I played field hockey for a while, I did volleyball, cheerleading, I did basketball, I did soccer for a very long time, for like five years, I played in two teams, and I did karate for even longer, I did that for eight years, and after that, I, I'm, now I'm doing kickboxing because I like being a fast pace, it keeps me, you know, going. But all those sports, you know, it taught me how to be disciplined, how to listen, how to be a team, you know, blah, 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 what you learn in any sports. But it kind of calmed me down, and that's what my parents wanted. <laughs> and did you raise a specific religion or raised as an atheist? Well, I wasn't raised an atheist because my parents believe in God. Uh, my parents have my sister and I baptized in a Protestant church which is another form of Christianity, and uh, religion wasn't, like, a really big thing in our house. We don't pray before we eat. We don't go to church every Sunday. Um, we were never forced to go to church. The only time I was forced was through a cousin who was what I call a super Christian. She was the one who was involved with the church and all that stuff. Her husband was a minister, so, yeah. I wasn't into it, and neither was my dad. My mom, she was forced to go to church every Sunday and Sunday school every morning. And she was forced to do that, and she didn't want to do that to my sister and I. She wanted us to go if we wanted to, not because she, they forced us. And she hated going every Sunday morning. She hated it. She didn't like being forced. When she was 16, she told her parents, I don't want to go anymore. And her parents were like, okay, that's fine. Just watch your little brothers for us. So, religion, like I said, it's not that big. Christmas, you know, that's when Jesus Christ was born. But Christmas nowadays is more like a family holiday, a traditional holiday. We do our yearly, you know, family traditions, put the Christmas tree up, you know. But we don't do the church thing. We go to church for Christmas Midnight Mass, I don't know what it's called, but I know every time I drove to someone's house for Christmas Eve, I see, like, a lot of people packed inside the churches. Okay, did you have any Muslim people around you before becoming a Muslim? If there is, what was your thoughts about Muslims? Well, I had a couple kids well, probably like three or four of them, they were Muslims in school. I didn't know they were Muslims until they stopped going to school during the month of Ramadan. And I was like, where did they go? Did they move? And one of my friends was like, no, they're doing Ramadan. They're fasting. They were up almost all night, so they can't really go to school. I was like, okay. So I didn't really think twice about it. And also, I learned stuff. Not learned you know, I was, I don't know what to describe it, but from what I heard about Muslims, it's all about, you know, them in the news, the 9-11 attacks. I was like 10, 11 years old when that happened. And it didn't make me assume that all Muslims were terrorists, but there was, I live in a small town. There's 
you know, not a lot of, like, African Americans, there's, there's a, there's a lot of Latino people, Latins, and, you know, you don't really see a lot of Muslims here, but that's, they're, but nowadays, they're quickly, you know, coming here, which is great, mashallah, but, um, you know, so all the Muslim friends I made, they were probably online, or I met them on my trips to, um, out of the country, but, um, you know, I was, like, they asked me, like, what did you learn about, like, what do you know about Islam? I was like, well, I know they fast during Ramadan, they don't eat pork, and the women wear the scarves on their heads, and that's really it. And, you know, it's like, that, you know, he, my friend was, like, kind of shocked, and like, really, that's all you know? That's what they taught you in school? Like, I guess so, unless I wasn't listening, which I probably wasn't at the time, because, you know, school, when I was a teenager, I was like, whatever, I can't wait to get out of here. But, you know, what can you do? And, you know, so they gave me some information, you know, and they asked me, like, do you know any other Muslim people? And I was like, not many. Like, do you know any, do you know any Arabs? And like, no. So... You know, they asked me, like, well, what do you think of them? And I was like, I don't know. I don't really think much of them because the only time I see them is on the media. And he's like, um, basically, my friend was saying, well, we're not terrorists, you know. So I was like, okay, that's, that's nice to know. I'm glad you're not a terrorist. But, you know, all my Muslim friends, they were basically not, they're not all the same, but they're all super nice. They're very supportive, you know, you know, they all say, like, if you have any questions, just ask if you need any help, just ask, we'll try to do as much as we can. So they're very respectful and, you know, they never threaten me in any way. And, you know, people automatically assume, oh, you got Muslim friends? Have they threatened you? Have they made you do stuff? Even though that, even also because you're a woman, you should listen to them. I was like, No. What are you talking about? They're like one of my bestest friends. So, yeah, they're thanks to them. They helped me, they, you know, discover more information and helped me and give me some advice. So, when did you first hear about Islam and what was your thoughts about Islam then? Well, I heard about Islam in school and I didn't think too much about it. And that's really it. And when I really got to really knowing about it, it was just from what my friends were telling me about, and that's really all I can say about that. Okay, what reason make you started to become curious about Islam and said to yourself, I should learn this belief? Well, one of my friends was just asking me, like, do you know what this, how come, you know, your religion has, like, three gods, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I was like, I don't know, you're asking the wrong person. I'm not really a religious person. All I know is that I was taught that Jesus Christ was our Lord and Savior, and he's the Son of God, but when he's, and he asked me, do you really believe that he's the Son of God? I was like, to be honest, I'm not sure, because first of all, I wasn't there. And also, I thought, you know, for him to be the Son of God, you know, the Virgin Mary and God had to, you know, make the baby, you know, he would have his DNA, scientifically, but they tell you, like, the angel Gabriel told the Virgin Mary that you will become pregnant with the son, he will be, basically, the, you know, our savior, blah, 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 so he said, like, see right there, no Christian would say that unless they're having doubts about their own religion, and I was like, that's a good point, so, you know, during throughout that time, I was, like, learning and learning, looking on the internet, watching videos, I uh, also watched a lot of videos of people converting and why they did it, and, you know, that just made me even more curious, and me, my curiosity striked out more questions and more research, so my friend was going into it, Ramadan, and, you know, my friend said, like, well, why don't you try fasting for Ramadan, and I was like, you crazy not eat or drink for a whole day like well you know you're gonna drink when it becomes sunrise drink and eat you know and do your normal life I was like okay fine I'll try it for a day and this was like four or five years ago 
So I did it for a day. I had to work. It was the most hottest day in the summer. I remember it because I was sweating like a dog. And, you know, I just tried to make sure to go throughout the day without doing anything bad. So I did. And about a year or two after that, I did like a week of fasting for the next Ramadan. And two years ago, this was like, I believe, 2014, I went back to Egypt. I went to eat, I've been to Egypt twice. The first time was for a week. And the last time I was there for 10 weeks. And I say the last three weeks was Ramadan. So those three weeks when I was in Egypt, I fasted with my friends. They all, they never said that I, you know, all you have to because everyone else is fasting and be rude. But I was like, no, they always say like, if you're hungry, you can eat. It doesn't bother us. I was like, no, no, no. I'm not going to eat and wave my food in front of your face while you're fasting. No, I'm going to do this with you. And they say, okay. So I broke my fast with them a lot. I have iftar dinners with some of the family members. So, yeah. But there was a time when I broke it. I was, it was, a, it was 110 degrees out. And the elevator in my apartment broke. Or no, the electricity went out. I'm sorry. The electricity was out because that's how Cairo is. They have blackouts in random places. So my apartment was on the 12th floor. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to walk 12 flights of, st of stairs during this 110 degree weather. I'm going to die from a heat stroke. So once I got to my apartment after climbing those 12 flights of stairs, I had to get a drink of water because I felt like I was going to faint and pass out. So I ran, I got something to drink, but I felt guilty after I did that. I told my friends, I'm so sorry, I broke my fast, I had to get a drink of water, I climbed up 12 flights of stairs, the elevator wasn't working, the electricity's out. So they said like, okay, it's fine, you know, you're not Muslim, so it's not going to count, but I felt something, I felt so guilty. But the rest of the time, I fasted with them. So... You know, but after that, I say, when I was, I was just dating my fiance at the time. He was my fiance. He said last year of 2015, Ramadan, I said, like, why don't you fast for the whole month and see what happens? I'm like, okay. So I did. And for some reason, I felt like I accomplished something. You know, it felt, it was the most amazing feeling. I did it. I knew I could do it. And I probably proved a lot of people wrong. Uh, so, I did it. But I, like I said, I wasn't a Muslim then, and I know it didn't count. But I felt really proud of myself that I did that. So, what reason made you start to be curious about Islam and said to yourself, I should learn this belief? I don't know if I answered that question already, but I'll just do the short version. Well, I was told a lot of information about it. So I was like, I became curious and I'm a curious person. So I tried to learn things, new things a lot that I don't know of. So I just kept on learning and learning and learning. So that's what struck up my research. And how did you research Islam? Well, in today's day and age, we have the internet. So I learned a lot of stuff through the internet. I learned a lot of stuff on YouTube, you know, and also I, like, talked to a local imam, but that's another story. Um, you know, I just asked a lot of questions from friends, and I remember one time, you know, I had a dream. It was just, I don't dream a lot because I sleep kind of well, but the only time I do dream is on a rare occasion that I can't sleep much so I remember I only got like four hours of sleep and I woke up from this amazing dream I heard the call to prayer like Allahu Akbar and you know so on so on and I saw like a really like really bright white mosque and I was like hmm I knew it was the call to prayer because I was so used to hearing the call to prayer five times a day every day when I was in Egypt so I knew it was, I knew what I was listening to, and I know what a mosque looks like. 
So I was like curious, like, what, what is this dream about? And of course, I don't know, you know, if dreams have meaning or they're just random pictures in your brain while you're sleeping. So I asked a couple of my Muslim friends because I wanted to get almost everyone's opinion about it. And one said, it's just a dream, you know, doesn't mean much. But another, two Muslim friends are like, well, it ha- it's a really beautiful dream, but you should ask an imam, go to an Islamic center or a mosque, and they'll give you better answers than, you know, we, sh- we do. So, of course, I take my time to find a mosque or an imam, and I live in a small town, population of 6,000 people, and it feels like... The, the number is much lower because my town, there's a lot of land. It's not farmland. It's just a lot of spread out. And downtown has like all the stores and the malls. But yeah. So there was no, there's no mosque here. There's no Islamic center, center here. The closest one is probably like in a different city. So it's about a 30 minute drive. So I looked up an imam. So he's like near New Haven. So I emailed him. I told him, you know, about this dream. He's like, why don't you come meet me at my house with my wife? And I was like, okay. So I went there. And we talked for a good three, four hours. And I think he's from Pakistan. And his wife is an American. And she's a convert, too. Um, But they, and of course, just like any other Muslim person, they welcomed me. They gave me tea and cookies, and we just talked and talked and talked. And he asked me questions like, well, you know, besides the dream, what made you really learn about this or come and talk to me? Uh, and I'm just, you know, curiosity is basically my answer, just curiosity. And I asked him, like, what does my dream mean? And he said, well, that kind of a dream you had, it's either something really good is going to happen or something bad is going to happen. And I'm like, that makes sense because literally a week later after I had that dream, something bad happened. And I'm not going to go into full detail with that. But it made sense. I was like, the light bulb flicked in my head. I'm like, huh. I was like, okay. And then I didn't say much in contact with them, so I'm sorry if, you know, if this imam sees this video, I'm sorry I didn't keep in contact with you and thank you for all your help. But, you know, my research in Islam was just internet, YouTube, and friends, you know. And what moment when you accept and said to yourself that Islam is the truth? And what was it that impacted me? Well, what really impacted me was I saw so many people converting to a religion that is known for people turning into terrorists. I'm like, like they know the risk that they're getting into, and yet they're still doing it. And I'm like, why? So I said, so I read their, you know, blogs, read articles, I watched the videos, and they said, this is uh, this is the religion. This is it. This is the right one. We should all be following this because. This is how you live properly, and this is how you get rewarded to go into heaven or paradise, basically. It's like, okay. And basically, they're kind of saying the same things I was. They don't think Jesus Christ is the Son of God, because how can he, and he pronounces himself as God himself. Like, okay, if Jesus Christ is God, how does he worship God? And I also say to a lot of my Muslim friends, and I said, I don't think Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I think of him as a really big prophet of everyone, like, of our religions. And, you know, that's when a lot of them said, well, just right there, you are already a Muslim, you just don't know it. So, you know, I just kept on, you know, just striking the curiosity, just kept on researching. What really made me accept it was, you know, there was like a kind of a kick in the butt saying, because things were going, not horrible, it's just things just didn't seem going right. I was working, like, almost 14 hours a day. I worked two jobs, so I couldn't afford to go on a trip because I wanted to. And also, I had to pay for some bills that needed to get paid. 
I had to fix my car or else I'm not going to get to my jobs. And I was sleeping four to six hours a night. And that takes a toll on someone's body. And, of course, things were just happening. There was a lot of, you know, not trouble, like kind of like drama. Things were always happening. And I felt like, you know what, I think this is God basically kind of shake the sense into me. Saying that, you know, this is just going to keep getting worse if you don't convert, if you don't say the Shahada. And I told my fiance, of course, he was my, you know, you know, boyfriend at the time saying, and I told him, I think this is God's way of, you know, saying you need to change. You need to do this conversion or else I'm just going to make things a lot worse for you. And right when I said that, he said, Allahu Akbar, like, mashallah. You finally understand now. Like, yeah, I think I understood it for a long time. I just didn't accept it. And can you tell the day you became a Muslim the moment you say Shahada? Well, I was in Morocco at the time with my fiance. He was my fiance then, and he still is now. <laughs> but, um, you know, so we woke up early in the morning. And I got dressed. I At that time, I was wearing the scarf because, you know, I liked wearing it. And, you know, you know, I didn't get a lot of people staring. The locals weren't staring at me much because, you know, they see a woman in a scarf. So they automatically say, like, okay, she's really faithful. I'm not going to stare at her anymore. So, because if I didn't wear the scarf, people will see my red hair, my really white skin. They're like, wow, oh my gosh. So, of course, I... But I'm getting off track, I'm sorry. But, you know, I put on a scarf, I kind of, I wore modest clothes, you know, I wore long sleeve shirts, made sure my neck wasn't, you know, wasn't showing that much. I made sure I was wearing a loose, long scarf, sorry, not a scarf, a skirt. So I was wearing a loose, long skirt. And, you know, and they, and he said, just don't wear any makeup, you know, because I usually do to cover up pimples like this, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, just make sure you're totally clean, blah, blah, blah. So, okay, we went to this notary. And I'm just going to say this. Things in Morocco, the most easiest things you do is sometimes really difficult. But, you know, like here, you just say the Shahada, you, f you sign the paper, and you get your documents. But in Morocco, you, it's basically a hop and a skip. You have to do things uh, like... It's hard to describe, but it's just things were a lot harder, uh, like a longer process. Like we went to the notary so we can get, you know, I could say my shahada he there and get my documents. The document is basically saying, I hereby Courtney Baxter, you know, blah, 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 you know, uh, that she is a Muslim, she converted, she is legit. So, you know, that paperwork would basically, you know, prove that I'm a Muslim. So if I ever go to Mecca and I need it, they won't believe that, you know, just by looking at my face and looking at my passport with my English name, they wouldn't believe that I was a Muslim unless I show them their paperwork. So, you know, that paperwork, I had to fill out that, sign it, give them my passport to show them my nationality. And, you know, then right in the middle of the process, he was saying, okay, basically, he was, of course, he's talking to Arabic in Moroccan dialect. And, of course, I learned Egyptian Arabic because I was in Egypt for a long time and I picked it up and I was learning that. So the that local Arabic was really hard to understand. They speak really, really fast and they use different words. So... He was telling my fiance to tell us in English, saying, okay, do you know what yourself, you're getting yourself into? Do you know the five pillars of Islam and this is what they are? You got to fast during Ramadan. Obviously, you can't eat pork and, you know, you have to live like a righteous life. No more sinning. And, you know, just make sure that, you know, you, you know what you're getting yourself into. And he wanted to make sure that this is what I want. I want this for myself. And yes, my fiance is Moroccan. He's a Muslim. And I made sure to the notary that 
I, you know, I try to drill it, I had to drill it in his head, saying, like, I'm not doing this so I can marry my fiance. I'm not converting. Because if I converted to marry a Muslim man, then it wouldn't count. It wouldn't be real. I told him, I thought about Islam for five years. I researched it, and I came, became sure that I wanted to convert for a long time. So right then and there, he had the biggest smile on his face. And he's like, okay, you're ready. So I say this. Sh- I said the shahada, and once that happened, it felt like the most cleanest shower happened. Like this invisible rain of pureness was all- coming down on me. It was like a tingly sensation. Like all the bad that happened or that I caused any sin came out of my body, and now they became blessings. Because that's what I was taught. When you convert to Islam, all your sins become blessings. So I was like, okay. That also intrigued me into Islam too. Because I, you know, I'm not perfect. I did some sinning in my life. So I kind of figured, well, I'm not a good enough person to, be- to become a Muslim. But, you know, af- but after that, after I said the Shahada, they said, Allahu Akbar and MashaAllah. And of course, my fiance was saying the same thing. He had the most happiest face on his, happiest smile on his face, you know. And like I said, it was like a time I'm never going to forget. Okay. What, let's see. What was it like the first moments after you take the Shahada? I felt like a brand new person. I still felt like I was me, but I was a brand new person. Even though I'm keeping my English name because this is the name my parents gave me. And I love my name. And I love my parents. I want to keep it that way. But also in my uh, conversion documents, they have my English name. But also they have my Muslim name, which is Hanan. Which I think is merciful, if I'm correct. I have to look at it again. My memory is not all that good. But... You know, I take I took on that name because my fiance and his family kept on calling me, Oh Hena Hena It's hard to call you Courtney. It's hard to say that because, you know, their accent is you know, Courtney's not a common name in Morocco, obviously. So they just kept on calling me Hanan. So I the notary asked me, like, well, what name would you wanna take on? So I looked at my fiance, I'm like, Simo, I wanna call myself Hanan. <laughs> But I still get called Courtney because it's my birth name. But through documents and also through my future in-laws, they call me Hanan or sometimes Courtney. But you don't have to change your name. You don't have to. But this is just like for your Muslim documents that they call you Hanan. You don't need to change your passport. You don't need to change your driver's license or anything like that. You don't need to go through the full name change. But he just said like, you don't have to, but, you know, we just need it for your documents. So I was like, okay, fine. Okay. After I became a Muslim, how has it changed your daily life? Well, I'm now, I feel like I'm more mature, even though I've always felt like I was mature, but now I think I really became more mature in my life. I became more responsible, more relying, and, you know... It's just because when I was growing up, I always kept my room so dirty. I had clothes all over the floor, but now I keep my floor clean because obviously I need that floor to pray on. Because I can't pray on dirty clothes on my mat. So I keep that clean. You know, I try to help out with my parents and my, you know, my sister as much as I can. You know, I always do 110% at work. So, and also it helped me to make sure to keep track of time because you had to pray five times a day at certain times. So I always check on time. So because of that habit, I make sure I'm always early for work. I'm always, I'm never late since becoming a Muslim. And usually sometimes I just make it to work or I'm always like a few minutes late before I converted. So this conversion has helped me in my personal life and also my career slash work life. So let's see, how did your family and your friends react when they learned you became a Muslim? Well, to be honest, I didn't go up to my family like, oh, hey guys, I became a Muslim, bye. No, like, I 
I've always been like this. I kept my private life private. So if I was dating someone, I would just like tell them like, oh, hey, mom, I've been dating this guy. It's getting pretty serious, blah, blah, blah. And then she's like, oh, okay. So they don't take these things by surprise because this is how I am. I keep my private life to myself for a reason because I'm the youngest in my family so things are either 10 times worse or 10 times better because I'm the baby of the family so every things are like different when you're the youngest so I don't like be like oh Courtney that's amazing my little baby's growing up I'm like oh mom stop but you know but I think they know. They're not stupid. Uh, So, obviously, I know when they walk in a room, they see my prayer mat right next to my door. And they see this big book, this amazing book, right next to my bed. So, I think they know. People just don't buy Qurans just for decoration. Probably some people do, but they're probably... People are probably really asking... Like, are you a Muslim? No, it's for decoration, but this is not for decoration, obviously. And my my relationship with my friends and family is the same. Nothing changed, you know. They kind of see me not totally different, but they've noticed a change in me that I've become more responsible. I became, you know, more reliable on everything. So, you know, they see that difference in me. And let's see, do you get support from Muslims? Yes, I do get support. I get support from a fellow convert. He was born in Puerto Rico, but he lives in my state. So, you know, I get support from him because, you know, I ask him questions because he's a convert. So I ask him questions like, oh, how did your family take it? You know, how did you transition and everything? And he helped me. He's like my big brother, even though. He's a Puerto Rican man, and I'm a really white girl. I tell, I call him. He's my big brother, and he calls me his little sister. So, you know, he helps me as much as he can. And also, my Muslim friends who were born into Islam, you know, they help me. They support me, you know. And also, you know, obviously my fiance. He always asks me, "Are you doing your prayers, making sure that I do right in this new religion that I'm in now?" make sure that, you know, I try not to eat pork because I was raised eating pork. That's not a bad thing, but I know that's not a good thing because for health reasons, it's not good. So he just, like, makes sure I do everything that I should be doing and don't do things, you know, half, like, you know, just not fully. So let's see. Do you get kids from non-Muslims and from Muslims? Not that I know of, you know, obviously, like, there was this time when I was working, I work, uh, in kind of, like, a beauty store, so this co-worker, she was doing my hair, because she's a hairdresser, she was doing my hair, and they were, like, kind of, like, joking around, like, oh, you know, your fiance is a Muslim, are you gonna become a Muslim? Because, like I said, I keep my private life private, so I didn't say anything, because they were, she was busy doing my hair, and she was moving it in my head, so I didn't really say much. She's like, and this girl, she said, like, if you're going to become a Muslim, make sure you don't bomb my house. And she was joking. I know she was. I've known her for a while. But I was like, come on. Don't say something like that. That could be, that's offensive. It's like, well, I learned this from the media. I'm like, well, the media is kind of crazy. Because if we're going to follow the media, then we're going to say all Muslims are terrorists. All black people are thugs. And all white people are crazy, murderous people who shoot down movie theaters and schools. So let's go with that. So, you know, she just laughed it off. But I was kind of serious in, of what I said. So, you know. But she knew that, you know, my fiancé is a Muslim, obviously. I'm going to defend him as no matter what. And even before I converted, I was defending my Muslim friends. You know, it's it's what any human should do. So, let's see. And I don't get critic criticism from Muslims so far, not that I know of, but I'm sure probably once I 
get really involved with the Muslim community, I'm probably going to get some critics. I did get some, actually, no, I lie. Um, I do get some criticism because some, from some Muslims, because they were, like, questioning, saying, like, oh, she just became a Muslim because her fiance is a Muslim. Uh, and I say, no, I did this because I wanted to. I've always, I've been wanting to do this for, for four or five years. So this is before I even knew my fiance even existed. So he has nothing to do with it. This is what I want to do by myself. So, yeah. And does it demoralize you? Not really. I learned to be patient with with people. I was raised to, you know, respect. Give respect when it is deserved. But if they're not going to give you the respect, just, you know, don't get involved with them. Don't talk to them. Or just be patient with them. You know, that's all you can do. And how do you study Islam? Well, in this day and age, internet. Internet or from friends or from an imam or from fellow converts. You know, we're all in this same religion, so we might as well learn it all together. So, you know, I do watch a lot of videos. I do watch a lot of um, YouTube videos of people going to Mecca. Because even before I became a Muslim, I've always dreamed of going there. So, it's just like something that... It's a once-in-a-lifetime thing, and inshallah, I'm going to go there. So, you know, finding resources, the easiest is the internet. I, you know, that's how I found most of my stuff. That's how I learned to pray. The first time I prayed, right after I did my shahada, my fiancé was in front of me, you know, doing his prayers. He said, just follow along as much as you can and just, you know, do just, just don't get mad at yourself if you do it wrong. So I uh, you know I was when he was reciting the prayers, he was saying Subhanallah alhamdulillah wa la ilaha. I was like I'm like how am I gonna do this? So after when we were done doing our first prayer together, he said, Okay, I know you're not you couldn't follow. So he said, Um, get we'll find a Quran and you can read the opening you know, pages of it, and you just do all the moments, but it's going to be kind of hard, because it's a big book, it's a very big book, so the next, I think the second prayer, or the next day I did prayer, I found a website, I think it was Muslim Converts, and it was like, a, basically a step-by-step -step beginner's guide, so I did that, I had the phone in my hand, I was like, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa ala yaha, and just like, subhanallah, you know, just did everything just with that. And after a week of doing that, reading off my phone, I memorized the whole beginner prayer. And the be when I mean the beginning prayers, I I think of it as this is how five year olds learn how to pray. They do all this stuff, and you add more, you know, phrases and recitations to it. So you know, even though it's just the beginner prayers, I felt you know, really proud of myself that I learned this by memory. I didn't pick up my phone or grab the Quran to recite the prayers. But, you know, with a little patience, and you know, it, I was able to do it. But in other resources, I think I've mentioned that, you know, there's no local mosque in my town. There's only churches. I don't even think there's a synagogue. And the closest Islamic center or mosque is 30 minutes drive for me. So it's a hop and a skip for me. And how do you maintain your faith? Well, how do I maintain it? I make sure that I show my love to Allah, to God. And, you know, all these blessings and signs are from him. You know, I have, I remind myself, like, you know, because of, him not a lot of stuff wouldn't be here I wouldn't be here so I make sure and you know do my prayers at the times that I can I'm not gonna lie there are times when I have I'm too busy with work I can't walk away from a customer and say oh, I'm sorry could you wait five minutes I need to pray see ya because that could be viewed as rude but you know I do make them up like when I when I'm not when I'm done with work, I make up the prayers that I missed. I know it's not the best thing to do, but 
I need jobs so I can have money so I can be able to survive. But, you know, I am trying to, you know, do better. I'm trying to find to fit prayers into my work life. But, eh, and how I keep my relationship with Allah, well, basically, I talk to him, talk to God every day in my prayers. I say, like, please, God, please, Allah, bless my family, bless my friends, you know, forgive their sins and hope you show them the right way. Yeah, okay. Islam is perfect, but we Muslims are not. What should we do better for Muslims? Well, basically, I agree. Muslims are not perfect. I'm not going to lie. I'm not perfect. No one's perfect. You could be following every single rule in any Bible, any Quran or Torah, and you're still not perfect. So, but Islam itself is perfect. I learned that I'm going to make mistakes learning this religion. I'm going to make plenty of them. I'm going to probably say some wrong word while praying. I'm probably going to mispronounce some word in Arabic. I'm probably going to do one movement that I shouldn't have done. So I have to face that. I'm going to get things wrong. I'm not going to be perfect. And I and God knows that. And, you know, it's just how it is. But, you know, as long as you keep praying and keep reading, you're going to, you know, get better and better. And that's just how we learn. That's how converts learn. This is how people who are born into Islam learn. Okay. What would you like to suggest to the Muslims? Well, I, well, I'm hoping that they would know that, you know, you should treat everyone with kindness, no criticism to the new people, because they do, uh, they kind of doubt us, saying like, oh, how are they going to learn all this? We've been learning this since we were, since we were born. How are they going to learn prayers in, you know, in this amount of time? But, you know, give us faith, give us patience. And try to help us when we ask, because we do need help, because this is all new to us. And, you know, I'm not saying all Muslims are like this, you know, but usually they do help you. They do help you as much as they can. But, you know, keep the criticism down, because criticism is just going to make people, you know, not want to be a part of something that they're going to get made fun of. Because I had some people, you know, thank God I learned about Islam before this person was saying, oh, Islam is correct, Christianity is wrong. You know, I'm not full, you know, I'm not a church go. I wasn't a church going person, but that's still, those words were kind of offensive. So, you know, I said to that person, like, you know, good thing I learned about Islam before I even met you, because if I was had no knowledge of Islam, I probably wouldn't have wouldn't convert because of you. Because the way you talk is highly offensive. So I say keep even though Islam I agree Islam is the right religion, I wouldn't you know, I would choose your words wisely when you talk to someone because you can say the wrong thing and people are like, Well, this is crazy. I'm not gonna do this because the way you're talking to me, I don't want any part of it. Uh, okay. What would you like to suggest to convert slash reverts? Well, I would suggest, you know, try to learn as much information as possible. Don't let people, you know, bring you down about it. Like, oh, you're learning about Islam? That's what ter terrorists are. But don't let that bother you. Don't let people say, like, oh, you can't eat pork. You can't eat bacon anymore. Bacon's amazing. You know what? After I haven't been eating pork in a while and I feel fine. I feel healthy because I know pigs, even though they can be cute little fat animals, but they're really kind of dirty. So I, I would rather not eat meat that came from a dirty animal. Even though you cook it on heat and you kill the bacteria, you still can get the, you know, the, not the illnesses, but you could, the dirty. It's not good for your body. You're Stomach can't process pork normally like it processes other meats. But, you know, but also for the new people who converted or haven't even converted yet, 
um, just keep, you know, don't doubt yourself, you know, don't think, like, how am I going to be a Muslim? I'm doing a terrible job as is right now. How am I, how can I do all this? How can I change who I am? But, you know, so there are some people who convert to Islam and they're done really bad things in their life. And we have to remind them, like, you know what, all your past sins, once you take Shahada, those sins will go away. They'll turn into blessings. So don't let that get in your way. And also try to keep learning as much as you can. Go find a local mosque, an Islamic center. Go find an imam or look online to find someone you can chat with who is an imam. And I believe there was a, is a website where you can chat with someone who is a, who is a Muslim, who is an imam, who can give you a better idea if you can't find those resources in your home. So there is help out there. You just have to find it. So, and also be patient with yourself because yes, the, everything you got to do in prayer is a lot. There's like paragraphs they have to remember, but like I said, it took me time. It took me a while to remember things by heart, but now I can say the opening phrase by heart. I can say the whole beginner's level of praying by heart, but I know uh, there's some things I still need to learn because there's like an advanced level, which is basically saying the whole prayer. And I'm still at that part where, in the advanced part where I'm still reading off my phone how to do it correctly. But there are times when I want to do it, everything by heart. So I put the phone away. I do the prayer by memory. And also don't think God's going to punish you if you did something, a prayer wrong. Uh, God basically gives you double points if you, if he knows you're trying and you're not giving up, you know, he knows that you're trying and he's trying to give you some faith that you can do this, you know, it takes time. You have to, in, in the Quran, it teaches you to be patient. You have to take it step at a time because if you try to do it in one sitting, you're going to get overwhelmed and you're not going to probably want to do this anymore. But once you, like, you take this step by step, you do this patiently, then you're going to get rewarded. You will. You're going to get rewarded. There's going to be a lot of blessings, a lot of good things happen in your life. And then you're going to be rewarded after, you know, after your life is over. You just have to remind yourself that I'm going to be rewarded. This is, this is not a waste of my time. This is an amazing thing that is going to happen to me. If I follow these rules, follow these things that you need to do on your daily life, because it's not just to, you know, wear you down, take up your time. No, it's it basically is telling you how to live a proper life. You have to remind yourself that. So what would you like to suggest for those who are searching the truth? I think you've answered that question a million times, but I will remind you again you just keep doing research. Turn your curiosity into questioning. Questioning, you're going to get your answers. And those answers are probably going to make you turn that into conversion. You have to keep researching. It took me five years of research, of curiosity, to finally do it. Because there's some people who read the Quran and they instantly convert. Everyone's different. So it could take... A person one day to convert. It could probably take a person a week, six months, a year, two, three, four, five years, you know? But you have to learn that, you know, you need, you don't need to doubt yourself. Don't be afraid. Because if you're afraid that your parents or your family is going to treat you differently, you just have to pray that they'll accept you. And if they don't, then you're going to have many Muslim brothers and sisters who are going to accept you. And probably your friends, if you're scared that they're not going to treat you right, then they're not really your, your real friends. If they're going to treat you so differently because you can, became a Muslim, you're trying to become a better person. You have to remind your family and friends if they're not, you know, if they don't support the decision, you have to remind them that, you know what, this is making me into a better person. This is teaching me to respect my family, to respect everyone, and to live a better life, you know, you should have to remind people that, and it's hard, 
you know, I'm not gonna lie, some things are, I'm, try I'm still getting through because this is a new life, I have to learn how to live it properly, and I was taught not to do things, you know, like halfway, I was taught, if you're gonna do something, do it full force, you know, if you don't do it full force, you're just wasting your time, and I don't want to waste every anyone's time, I'm not gonna waste my precious time in life, if I'm just going to do something basically half-assed. So, you know, like I said, take take it with a grain of salt. You have to be patient and you will be rewarded. And it's the most amazing feeling ever. I can, like, I can never give up this feeling because I feel like I'm on cloud nine. And things have just gotten better and better since my conversion. Things have been 10 times better with my relationship with my family, with my friends, my work life. Things have been getting better. I've been, like, I've been asked to be, you know, promoted in a job. I've got also gotten another, like, you know, I babysit this little boy, this cute little boy, and I used to do it once a week, and they asked me, like, well, you're amazing with our son. Could you please take care of him every morning now when we go to work? I was like, I would love to. I asked them why. It's like, well, you're amazing with our son, you know, and also, like, we're, you're reliable, you're here on time, you know, we can always count on you. And then because of Islam, I'm always make sure that I'm reliable. I was, you know, I've been learning to be reliable on time and on people. So Islam does make you a better person. You just have to discover that yourself. So, you know, and also do as much research as you can because you will find answers. You will. You should have to find them. So I won't try to make this any longer as it is. So thank you for listening to me. Uh, and I bless everyone who's been wa who's watching this. So thank you and salam.